Okay, so now I'm going to the thermodynamics part. So, so far I have talked about purely information theoretical aspect. So now I'm going to talk about uh, how to connect it to thermodynamics, especially the second row of thermodynamics. Okay, so basically what we have in mind is there is a thermodynamic system and there is some external agent called Maxwell's demo. And the Maxwell's demo performs a measurement and feedback about the system. So, okay. And the situation is very, can be very general. So there's a classical system that uh, it described, uh, described by a phase space point eta, and there is a heat bus at temperature beta. And <laughs> the demo performs a measurement about the system, and its measurement outcome is given by y. And in general, there is some stochastic error during the measurement. And as I mentioned before, the measurement error is characterized by the conditional probability like this. And for example, the simplest example is the Gaussian noise. And another important ingredient is feedback control. So there is a system and there is an outcome. And after the measurement, uh, the, that measurement outcome is used, used to control the system. So this can be very general. And the only requirement is just the causality. So the measurement outcome is, of course, used after the, only after the measurement. So that is only the constraint. And in, very general, in this very general setting, uh, we can prove the second law of sound dynamics by incorporating the information term like this. So uh, let us re remember that without Max's demo, uh, the work that can be extracted from the system is bound, bounded by the free energy difference that is written as delta F. So this double extraction is the uh, work that is extracted from the system. So, but if there is a Max's demo, so the upper bound of the ex extractable work is greater than, greater than the conventional bound, and new bound is given by the mutual information multiplied by the Boltzmann constant and the temperature. So this sets uh, the up fundamental upper bound of the capacity of Max's demo. And even if the demo is very, very clever, the work extraction cannot exceed, exceed this new bound. And we have the mutual information here instead of the channel information or something. And important point is that the upper bound of this uh, inequality is indeed achievable if we uh, appropriately design the feedback protocol. So in that sense, uh, this is an optimal inequality that sets uh, the upper bound of the demon's capacity. So I, I will show several examples to achieve this upper bound instead of showing this, uh, showing the uh, proof, mathematical proof of this inequality. And let me talk about some very intuitive meaning of this result. So in conventional thermodynamics, for example, in the case of the kernel cycle, uh, the work is extracted from this heat flow and only a part of the heat flow is converted into the work. And the upper bound of the conversion is uh, given by the kernel efficiency like this. And the upper bound is achieved by the kernel cycle. That is a reversible heat engine. On the other hand, in the information engine case, the upper bound is given by the uh, mutual information. And this means that the resource of the work and the free energy is given by the mutual information term. So, and the upper bound of the conversion rate is achieved by the zero range. So actually, in this case, the work is given by KT row two, and delta F is zero because it's just cyclic, and I is log two, because in the case of the zero range, there is no measurement error, and uh, the channel information is log two, so the right-hand side is given by KT row two. And also the left hand side is K 
indicated of two, and in that sense, the zeroed engine achieves uh, the equality in this inequality. So, in we can say that the zeroed engine is a, is a kind of optimal information heat engine that plays a plays a parallel parallel role to Carnot cycle in conventional thermodynamics. So, zeroed engine is a very very simple model of information engine, but it's it, it is a very important uh, typical model of information engine. Okay, so now, so the point of this inequality is that the upper bound is given by mutual information. So next I will show several models that indeed achieve the upper bound of this inequality. Okay, the first example is uh, uh, zeroed engine uh, with some measurement error. In the original zeroed engine case, we can perfectly distinguish the position of the particle, left or right. But now we assume that uh, has some measurement error. Uh, in this case, we have epsilon zero for the flipping from zero to one, and error rate epsilon one from for the flipping from one to zero. And also we consider a little bit general situation that the volume of the box is not symmetric and we have uh, the volume ratio uh, like p and one minus p. So then, uh, okay, so this is a, again the same as a zero engine, but we insert the barrier at this asymmetric position and then we perform the, the demo performs the measurement. Uh, with some measurement error described like, like this. So the most important difference between this case and the original Schrader engine is that even if uh, you find that the particle is in the left, there is some probability that the particle is actually in the right side. So in this case, uh, it is not the best strategy to push this wall to the rightmost side like the case of the original zeroed engine. Because there is some small probability here, so, and if the particle is actually in the right side, then, and if you push the wall to the rightmost side, you need some infinite uh, work to push this to this uh, infinitely small region. So you need to stop uh, this wall at some point, and then, from that reason, you can't extract the work that is equal to the channel information, for example, row two. And you can, we can also calculate uh, the work value as a function of the error rate and the volume at which we stop the wall here. And the result is like this. This is a little complicated, but we can optimize the position of the uh, wall in the final stage that is characterized by V0 and V1. And we compute this uh, partial derivatives and we find the uh, best value of V0 and V1. This means that we have some optimal feedback protocol character, characterized by V0 and V1. And uh, at that point, we have the maximum work. And after some calculations, we can directly show that uh, the work value at the best feedback protocol is given by the mutual information. So this is a, uh, the first example that uh, the measurement is, in, measurement is imperfect, but feedback is perfect given that measurement, and we can extract the work that is equal to the uh, mutual information. Okay, so, but this is a little bit complicated and it, it's not easy to sh see what, what is the essence of this best feedback protocol. So maybe, so we can introduce another simpler model for this feedback process. So, okay, the original thread engine involves some particles in a box and pressure or something like that, but it is, it's a, it's a little tricky from the theoretical point of view. So we 
can consider a simplified, more simplified model uh, of the serial engine that consists of just uh, two sites. So this kind of model can be uh, described by a Markov jump process. I think Professor Lee already talked about that. So in, yeah, the mathematical descri description of this type of system is more transparent than, than the particle model of the serial engine. So we consider this kind of model. So we have uh, two sites, uh, left and right, and the particle just hops from left to right and right to left. And these two sites have um, their energy levels, and we suppose that we can control that energy level. And, okay, so first we consider the perfect measurement case. So in the initial state, the particle is in the left or right with equal probabilities. Uh, that is just a summary equilibrium. Then the demo performs a measurement and particle is in the left side, for example. Then uh, we can instantaneously push up this right energy level to infinity. So this prohibits the particle goes back to the right side. So this is analogous to the insertion of the wall. So yeah, so this is an instantaneous control to make uh, the transition prohibited. And then we uh, very, very slowly push down this right energy level to the original value. And from this process, we can extract KT log two of work. Uh, so in that sense, uh, we can extract, uh, we have the same work value as the case of the zero engine. And the uh, upper, uh, upper bound of the second row of some dynamics is achieved also in this case. Yeah, so this is an error-free case. Then it's simpler to introduce the measurement error to this model than the particle model. So <laughs> we have, again, the probability distribution like this. And then we perform the measurement of the position of the particle with error rate, for example, epsilon. And then after the measurement, we have some probability distribution like this. So even if you find the particle in the left side, there's some small probability that the particle is actually in the right side. Then we push up this uh, right energy level, but not to infinity. Because if the particle is in the right side, actually, then, and if we push up this energy level to infinity, then it requires uh, infinity work. So again, we stop this energy level at some appropriate point. Then after that, we very, very slowly push down this right energy level to the original position. So by this cycle, the extractable work is the function of the error rate and uh, this energy level delta E. And we can again optimize this energy level delta E. And we find that in the best case, the work extraction equals the mutual information. So, and, and we can calculate that the best value of this energy difference is given by this. And here, epsilon is the error rate. So this is more intuitive than the previous particle model because this means that the error rate is given by the Gibbs canonical distribution of this energy level. So this is a very general strategy. So after the measurement, we have some conditional probability that uh, the particle is left side or right side. And after this instantaneous quench, uh, we make that conditional probability as a Gibbs distribution of the new energy level. Then this distribution can be stabilized uh, because it's already summary equilibrium, so this doesn't relax. So then finally we can very slowly change the right level and then finally we can extract some work. So this means that if we adjust the energy level to the post-measurement distribution, then 
it can be uh, regarded as a reversible process, and we can extract the maximum work from this cycle. So yeah, and this strategy is very general. And for example, okay. So in this case, so we have, I mean, I mean, in this in this case, we have probability one minus epsilon and epsilon here. And this is, we can write down this as minus epsilon. So this y is the measurement outcome. And this x is the original state. So yeah, this conditional distribution uh, under the condition that our measurement outcome is some y, the state is x. So that is given by, uh, in this case, epsilon or minus epsilon, or one minus epsilon. Then we can we adjust the energy level such that. We adjust the energy level such that uh, this conditional, no, sorry, this is x. This conditional distribution is uh, given by the canonical distribution of the new energy level. So this is actually dependent on y as well. So that is a feedback protocol. So depending on the outcome y that we get, we change the energy level such that the conditional distribution equals the Gibbs distribution. So by doing so, there's no additional dissipation and the maximum work extraction can be achieved. So that is the strategy of this kind of feedback protocol. So, are there any questions? Yes. What is EX given by? Here? Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, this formula means that this energy level is determined by this. So, first we perform a measurement and we get this vision, this. So, this is Y is outcome. So under that measurement outcome, we have some distribution of x. So that is, for example, in that case, one minus epsilon and epsilon. And so now we have this, and then we switch the energy level from here to here, uh, and we define this by using this. So, I mean, we should design the energy level as a logarithm of P, X, Y, and then we have the optimal feedback protocol. So th that, that is the idea of this. Uh, yeah. So how are you going to determine P, which is a distribution, yeah. from one measurement? Yeah. Oh, uh, we make this again and again. And so, so it is, in that sense, it is necessary to know the distribution, information about the dist distribution. So, in yeah. some sense, this is uh, an ensemble of these Szilard-like engines. And yeah. These are properties of the ensemble of engines. Exactly right. Yeah. And not quite an individual one. Not the individual one. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, in this case, for example, if we know the initial energy level that is degenerate. Then we know the initial distribution one half, one half and one half beforehand. And also if we know the measurement error epsilon beforehand, then we can calculate this uh, conditional distribution. Yeah, so in that sense, we need some, yeah, some information about the ensemble, like epsilon or one half, yeah. 
Yes. Oh. Uh, uh, actually, this is correct. So this is a condition. So under the condition of our measurement outcome, we have some distribution of x. Yeah. Oh, in this case, uh, uh, this becomes the same. Sorry, I didn't explain that. So, yeah. Okay, so okay, the definition of error rate is P of for example one zero and this is X and this is Y as you pointed out. So but again you can show that This is the same. So if if the x distribution is one half, so you can show that this is again epsilon. So the, they are just the same. Sorry, I yeah. start of your explanation, so why did you write down the conditional for something? Oh yes. Uh, Give me here. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, so <laughs> our goal is to design the feedback protocol that achieves the upper bound of the second row. So for that purpose, what we can choose is energy levels. So and what we already have is the conditional probability distribution. So and this says that uh, if our distribution is this, we need to design the energy levels uh, such that this is satisfied. So then the protocol becomes optimal. So the reason is that under some specific given measurement outcome, we have distribution, some distribution, and if the process is reversible for every outcome Y, then for then we need always have we always need to have the Gibbs distribution for every outcome for each outcome. So by changing the energy level, so that requirement is satisfied and the process becomes reversible for any given outcome. That, does it make sense? Okay, so, yes. So, uh, I, I have a little confusion about the work extraction through that cosine static control. So, yeah. so, is it possible to have extract work from that cosine static control because uh, the, the particle at the ground state can reach the upper state because of the thermal con contact? Exactly, right, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah. In this case, the definition of the work is given by okay, for example, if we have some probability P and one minus P here, and if we change this as delta T E, then the work extraction is some delta E. Work extraction is one minus P and delta E. So, at example, maybe this is the simplest case. So, at this stage, the probability here is just zero, but, but this is a very slow process. So, we have some probability that uh, there, there is some summer excitation, and this particle comes here. And so, and if you find the particle here, then the work is extracted. And you can compute that eventually it, it's given by a row to KT row to, yeah.
So, the question. In this case. Um, yeah, in this case then next oh, yeah. In this case, so we have data. Data is given by infinity. So okay. So to get that row two, of course you can directly calculate the work uh, based on the definition. But I think the easiest way to calculate the work is. Work is initially what we have. Initially we have this. This is infinity, and finally we have this. So you can simply compare the equilibrium free energy between these two. Then the delta F is k t log two, and the process is very slow. Then the work is just the same as this. So I think that that is the simplest way. Of course, you can directly compute that based on that definition. And yeah, but, but I, I think this is the simplest. Yeah, the general case is also the same. You can compare the free energy of this and free equilibrium free energy of this. And yeah, that is equal, equivalent to the work. Okay, so yeah, so this is a demonstration of the information to work conversion with some measurement error, and yeah, th this strategy also works for the range bank case. So in the range bank case, uh, okay, we consider some simple model. So we have some harmonic oscillator here, harmonic potential here, and uh, we consider the underdamped, uh, sorry, overdamped range by equation. And then we have some Gauss Gaussian distribution in the initial state. Then we perform a measurement, uh, and we again support that the measurement error is Gaussian. Then if we find that uh, the measurement outcome is, for example, new. <coughs> here new prime, then the conditional distribution after the measurement is given by this sharper Gaussian distribution. Then according to our general strategy, so we should stabilize this uh, conditional distribution as a Gibbs distribution. So we switch this harmonic potential to, to this form. So we should switch the uh, center of that potential to new prime, and also we should narrower the potential shape. So then uh, this conditional distribution becomes a uh, summer equilibrium under the condition that our measurement outcome is new prime. So then uh, we expand this potential uh, and we finally go back to the initial state. So this is, yeah, conceptually this strategy is completely the same, completely the same as this. So in this case, we stabilize this distribution by changing the two levels. In, and instead of that, in this case, we stabilize uh, this uh, continuous dist distribution by changing the harmonic potential. And after some calculations, we can uh, calculate the work that is extracted from the entire process. And we can confirm that, uh, the, for example, you can see this. So the extracted work is given by uh, log of 1 plus S over N. And that, that is exactly the same as the mutual information of the Gaussian case that I showed in the first class. So, so we find that the work extraction equals uh, the mutual information multiplied by the Brotman constant and the temperature. So again, uh, in this case, uh, by adjusting the potential to the distribution, we can uh, optimally convert the work to convert the information into the work. Okay, so 
Yeah, this is a third example. So now I think now you can see that everything is the same. So actually, the first example is again the was actually the same. So this is the I think most complicated example, but uh, the best position of the wall is given by some given by the same strategy where the yeah conditional distribution is the some gives distribution. Okay, so so far we have talked about this inequalities. So the upper bound of the work extraction uh, in the presence of max system. So now So next, I'm going to a more non-equilibrium aspect of uh, information heat engine. So, <laughs> so it's related to the so-called Jarzinski equality. So I suppose that I can skip the explanation of this. It was already told. Is, is that true? Yeah. Okay. So yeah, just a reminder. So. We have the work on the free energy, and the work is the stochastic quantity if the system is small. And we can take the ensemble average of exponential minus beta double minus delta F. So this is sometimes called the entropy production. So then it is given by, always given by one. So this means that uh, the second law of thermodynamics can be expressed as a form of uh, equality instead of inequality because so if you expand the exponential inside the ensemble average as a Taylor series, then you, will, you can take into account the second and third and fourth orders of fluctuations. Then if you sum up all of them, the second row is indeed given by uh, just a single equality. And from this, we can recover the second row of thermodynamics like this. And also, if you stop that expansion up to the second order, then uh, the fluctuation dispersion theorem is divide, uh, is direct. So in this sense, the Jardinsky equality is a kind of unifying equality from that, from which we can uh, reproduce the second order and also the linear response theory, or uh, yeah, etc. And now, question is that. <coughs> Okay, so the Jarzinski equality gives the conventional second row of thermodynamics. And we have shown that uh, in the presence of Max's demon, there is an uh, additional term that is given by the mutual information in the second row of thermodynamics at the average level. So how about uh, the equality corresponding to the feedback control process? So, and the answer is yes and very simple. So, uh, the, here we have a kind of stochastic mutual information term inside the ensemble average. Then we still have the same form of the Jarzinski equality like this. <coughs> okay, so the precise definition of like this. So, okay, so this is, this is a mutual information. So, the notations are literally involved, but this is essentially the same as uh, what I have shown before. And if we <coughs> extract uh, the logarithmic term from the inside of the integral, as I mentioned, then you have the stochastic version of the mutual information. And then you take as an ensemble average of exponential of entropy production minus the stochastic mutual information, then, <coughs> then it always given by one. So that, that is a general Jarzinski equality. So if you don't have this stochastic mutual inform information term inside the ensemble average, then the left-hand side is not given by one, but given by some other uh, value, like two or something. So yeah. So we need this stochastic mutual information term to recover the second row of sometimes in the presence of feedback control. And from this, we can derive uh, the generalized second row I, that I have shown before. Uh, so we can say that the, this 
general Jarzynski quality is the most fundamental one to understand the role of Max system or the presence of, uh, uh, for feedback control. <coughs> okay, so this is some cell parts. So um, now I'd like to talk about some, yes. Yes, exactly, yeah, right. So I didn't write down, but <coughs> so the fluctuation dispersion theorem is like Yeah, if I remember correctly, so this is a fluctuation dispersion theorem. So, yeah, so, and, <laughs> yeah, we need some information term here. So, it, it, it's a little involved, so I forget that, but, yeah, in my PRA paper, yeah, there is some expressed form. So, because, yeah, originally, just by expanding this, this Jarzynski equality, we get this, and, now we have some information term here, so this should appear some somewhere here. Yeah. So, other questions? Okay. <laughs> so these are separate. So now we are going to the experiments. So actually, there are many, many experiments. I think more than 20 or 30 experiments in this decade. But of course, I can't talk about all of them. So I just pick up to these two experiments that I was, uh, because just I, I was involved in this experiment. But I, I'd like to you know, say that, so this Coidal particle experiment was the first demonstration of the Maxwell's demo. So before that, there was no quantitative Maxwell's demo experiment. So uh, in 2010, so the Maxwell's demo was first realized you know, by a real experiment. So uh, which I will talk about, talk from now. So the idea of the experiment is very simple. So we First, consider the, some spiral stairs like potential here. Uh, and we imagine that this is inside the water at room temperature. So here is a Brownian particle. And uh, because of thermal fluctuations, this particle goes up this stair with some uh, small probability. But on average, it goes down like this. And <coughs> we can think that the height of this uh, stairs is just the uh, free energy, and that is some that is almost the same as the uh, thermodynamic work. And we look at the position of the particle, and if the particle goes up this stair, then we insert the barrier just below the uh, below the particle, and then again the particle fluctuates due to thermal fluctuations. And only when the particle goes up, then we insert the barrier just below the particle. And by doing so again and again, the particle goes up this, these stairs, and yeah, uh, without injecting any work directly directly to the particle. So because uh, in principle we can support that this wall is very thin and infinitely thin, so. Uh, this wall incision doesn't perform any work to the particle. So we can expect that uh, the particle goes up this, these stairs, uh, purely driven by information. So this is actual experimental setup. So we have a colloidal particle here, and this is a preparat, and here is water at room temperature. And, uh, this first particle is attached to the cover glass, and this second particle is attached to, attached to the first particle, and the second particle goes around the first one. 
So this can be regarded as a kind of rotating Brownian particle. So, and we can make some potential by using these four electrodes. And for example, this, uh, this is uh, the superposition of some constant gradient and the sinusoidal potential. And because this is a rotating Brownian particle, so this is a periodic boundary. So this zero degree and two pi degree are the same, but we can induce some uh, torque uh, along the circle. So we have some uh, gradient here. So, so in that sense, this is a kind of spiral stairs-like potential. So, yeah, and this is our actual feedback protocol. So we perform the measurement about the position of the particle. Uh, and if the particle is found in the bottom of the valley, then we do nothing. But if the particle is found in the top of the mountain here, especially in the left side of the top of the mountain, then we switch the potential from this blue one to red one. Then uh, the top of the mountain becomes the bottom of the valley like this. So the particle can't go back to the left side. So this is analogous to the worry insertion to the system. So by doing this, uh, we can mimic the, yeah, the original idea like this. But in this case, the wall insertion is just a switching of the potential. And so in that sense, this wall is just a mountain of this, uh, this uh, part of the potential. So it is not infinitely the same. So there's some probability that the particle is pushed up by this wall insertion. So we need to subtract uh, the work injected into the particle uh, by this switching process. And what we want to check is that uh, the particle goes up the stairs, uh, and the, that free energy gain is greater than the work injection during this uh, switching. If we can see that, so we can see that the information is purely uh, converted into the work or the free energy. So we first checked the trajectory of the particles. And this epsilon is as an error, uh, not error rate, but feedback delay. Sorry, I didn't explain that. So we uh, set some delay time between the measurement and the feedback. Feedback means switching. So if this time delay epsilon is small, the feedback works well. And if, if this epsilon is wrong, so the feedback doesn't work, we expect. And actually, if this uh, feedback delay is small, then the particle goes up uh, the potential. And if the feedback delay time is compar comparable to the, uh, to the relaxation time of the particle inside the well, then the particle doesn't go up or go down. And uh, if the feedback delay time is sufficiently long, then the particle just goes down. And we have performed the energy measurement of that uh, process. And this means the uh, difference between the free energy gain and the work injection. So delta F means the height of the spiral stairs like potential. And W is the work in injected to the system during the switching process. And we can see that this difference is still positive. So if the feedback delay time is short, this means that in that region, the information is converted into the work uh, or the free energy. So uh, the conventional second law is violated in this region, but uh, information can be regarded as a resource of that uh, free energy gain. And we can compare the theoretical upper bound of the actual work gain. And we check that the efficiency is about 30%. So in this case, the mutual information is just given by the Shannon information because we suppose that the uh, measurement is 
uh, error free. And so from the distribution of the measurement outcomes, we can uh, calculate the channel information that is given by 0 0.22. And the, in the best case, the energetic, energetic gain is 0 0.062. So the ratio is about 28%. So uh, the, yeah, uh, this amount of information is converted into the work in this case. So, and yeah, this is always, al already 12 years ago, but it, it is a kind of a fast realization of quantitative, quantitative, quantitative Maxwell's DMA experiment. So, and the reason why this is not so efficient, it's less than 30%, is that the main reason is that uh, we didn't use the information about this region. I mean, in this case, I mean, if the particle is found in the bottom of the barrel, we do nothing. So that means that the information associated to this region is totally dissipated. On the other hand, in the case of the thread engine, so we can extract the work from the both cases, I mean the left case and left case and the right case. But we, in this case, we only extracted work from this uh, right case, so yeah, that's the reason why the efficiency, the, that's the main reason why the efficiency is not uh, high. And another reason is that uh, this process is not quasi-static, not very slow, but we just fit the pot potential uh, instantaneously. So that makes the process irreversible and some energy is dissipated and the uh, efficiency is not uh, perfect. Okay, so this is the first experiment. And yeah, I also talk about another experiment. So that is more efficient experiment and that is more close to the original slide engine sort experiment. And in the experiment that I will talk from now, so the efficiency can be 100% in principle, but some, because of some pra practical imperfections, so the efficiency is just given by 75%. Okay, so this is just a reminder. So, so this is a two-level slurred engine uh, that can be perfect if we adjust the energy level uh, as this. And in this case, the work is given by the mutual information. So what we wanted to implement is exactly this protocol and by using a so-called single electron box. Okay, so maybe the details are not very important, but uh, this is the device. So we can distinguish the number of electrons inside uh, this island of yeah, island here, and we consider uh, the number of electrons n equals zero or one at the two-level system. And uh, in principle, we can perfectly know the number of the particle electron in this uh, island, but we can uh, artificially make some measurement error by changing the filtering of this measurement. And so we can control uh, the measurement error. And we can also change the energy level by inducing some voltage around here. And, and so actually by using this system, we implemented uh, this uh, process exactly. So this is a experimental result. So this green line shows the mutual information. And this blue line is the work extraction. And this red line is the efficiency, work divided by the mutual information. So yeah, as you see, this is not 100% because of some imperfection of real experimental setup. But yeah, in principle, we can uh, achieve 100% in this setup. And more 
interesting thing is that we have experimentally confirmed the general Jarzinski equality, where the stochastic mutual information term is inside the ensemble average. So this is this green line is this green plot represent uh, the left hand side of, of the Jarzinski equality without uh, the mutual information term. So without that modification, the original Jarzinski equality is clearly violated. That is very different from one. On the other hand, if we take into account the mutual, stochastic mutual information term, and this is very close to one uh, within the error bar. So we have uh, confirmed that the general Jarzinski equality is uh, satisfied, even if we perform feedback uh, processes. Okay, so do you have any questions? Actually, I suppose that I stopped here, but I still have almost 23 minutes. So if it is. Uh, so, <clears throat> so you show that uh, the efficiency is very high, and uh, but in the classical heat engine, the efficiency of the heat engine cannot be higher than the Carnot engine. Yeah. And so I wonder, is there any upper bound of efficiency like that? Like so is so. So is there any known upper bound of efficiency when we consider the information? Uh, yes, so you mean the modification of the kernel efficiency? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. there is some formula. So So the original Carnot efficiency is so this is a heat yes. uh, from the hot reservoir, yes. and this is a work, and this is a ratio of the temperatures of the hot and cold reservoirs, and this is the original efficiency. And if there is a max then we have modification term like. If I remember correctly, so we have modification term like this. So we have here the temperature of the cold bus, and we have the mutual information here. So yeah, it, it is not intuitive that we have the cold temperature here, but yeah, you can derive this yeah, starting from some statistical mechanics. Thank you. Yeah. <clears throat> Yes. To, to achieve the equality in that uh, equality, we need quadrastatic process. So I, I just wonder, uh, in the previous experiment, yeah. how slow is it? Yeah, actually, <laughs> I don't remember the details. But so, the yeah, actually, this experiment was was not perfect because that driving process is not sufficient, sufficiently slow. So that's the reason why the yeah, efficiency is not 100%. If it was sufficiently slow, then it, sh it, have, it, it should be 100%. But actually, it was not because of some practical restrictions. Uh, uh, in classical engine, yeah. as you wrote down there, yeah. we need two temperature, yeah. hot and cold. Yeah. But as far as I remember, the two two energy state Gillette engine, right, yeah. am I right? There is only one beta, right? Exactly. Yeah. Then. Is it uh, 
why we need just one single beta. Like, like there is no need to two different temperatures? I, I oh, mean. Yeah, so yeah, actually this is a two reasonable case. Mm -hmm. But so, yeah, in conventional thermodynamics, of course the part PTR motion is inhibited, so it is impossible to extract the work from a single reservoir. Mm -hmm. So it is not it was not interesting to consider just a single reservoir case. But in the case of the Maxwell's demo, so it, it can extract the work from a, from just a single heat bus. So the in that sense the minimal model of Maxwell's demo can be with our, just a single heat bus. Uh, so, so Maxwell's demo works yeah. as a, some kind of heat bath? <laughs> Maxwell's demo itself is not a kind of heat bath. So uh, it's uh, a kind of external agent. So mm -hmm. it can extract the work from a single reservoir. So, so that's the reason why the minimal model includes only a single reservoir. It's a very and, interesting picture of quantum <laughs> engine. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, all of this can be generalized to the quantum stations. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I, don't, I will not talk about quantum stuff in this lecture, but yeah, in principle, we have the same form of formulas or second rows, even in the system is quantum. Mm -hmm. Only difference is that the information term should be replaced by some quantum information term. So mutual information is just a classical information. So we need to replace it with some uh, quantum information. Okay. Thank you. Uh, when using uh, noise, there is already using Gaussian noise, I think. Um, but there is something, something intuitive, or there is something, another noise can be used? Uh, yes, in, in general theory, so any kind of noise is fine. So it's not restri restri restricted to Gaussian noise. But okay. o only for demonstration, so I have shown the Gaussian noise case like this. But this is just demonstration, so the general theory can be applied to any kind of noise. Then Gaussian noise is the very um, precise to the reality. Then, same, yeah. same to apply to the reality. Sorry, I uh, could you say that? Sorry, I. So then, the using Gaussian noise has. There is something very exactly match the reality. Match, uh, sorry, what? what? Uh, using Gaussian, Gaussian yeah. noise is the match the reality. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, yes. I see, yeah. I'm not sure. So, <laughs> of course, it depends. So, yeah, it strongly dependent on ex real experimental devices. So, yeah, yeah. Of course, Gaussian noise is typical, maybe, but I'm not sure. So, actually, for example, in this case, in this measurement, the noise, in the, noise is, the original noise is, I think, close to Gaussian, but by some filtering or something, it, eventually it, it's not Gaussian, so, yeah. Uh, can you show the page of the two-level system with error-free measurement? Yeah. You mean uh, this? Thank you. Yes. Yeah. And I think because this process is error-free, yeah. the, the reversal process of this, uh, this process is kind of uh, erasing information. And so the erasing one bit and the, we can extract the work at KPT LN2. So uh, I wonder that, uh, can we interpret this result as a 
reverse of lambda law principle? Uh, it's a subtle problem. So, yeah, some people say that uh, time reversal of feedback is erasure, but erasure doesn't include any external agent. So, in my yeah, in my perspective, the time reversal of feedback process is a measurement process. So, actually, I have time, so I can say. Yeah, tomorrow I'll talk about the Randall's principle. So, what, yeah. Yeah, so what, what do you, I, I think what you wanted to say is the, yeah, if we reverse this protocol, so then starting from this, uh, and we end up with this, so this is our, yeah, uh, erasure process. So that's true if you restrict your measurement outcome to only left case. Yeah, that's true. But on the other hand, in reality, there's uh, another po pro uh, possibility that the outcome is right. In that case, you will end up with the opposite situation. So, but the in Randall's uh, uh, scenario, so you should always have the final state left. So in that sense, the time reversal of this uh, without restricted to a single measurement outcome is not the Randall's erasure. So it, it's uh, actually a kind of measurement. So it means that from starting from here, uh, this will end up with the left with probability one half or right with probability one half. So that is a kind of a copying process of another system. So yeah, I, I haven't talked about measurement process or something today, so what, yeah. But yeah, in some sense, yes. So if you only look at the left case, this is yeah, the time reversal is around those areas. Yeah. It was my point. Thank you. It's a little bit early, but uh, then, then our schedule, but we can actually stop here. Then yeah, so let me just continue. Yeah, yeah no, no, yeah, let me just briefly we have about say. 10 more minutes. <laughs> no, no, yeah, yeah. Tomorrow I'll talk about the, uh, yeah, max system, some dynamics of max system itself. So, so far I have considered the operation of Max's demo and how the second row of some dynamics of the system is modified. But tomorrow, there is another topic that, how about some dynamics of Max's demo itself? So system is, the, of course, a some dynamic system, but Max's demo itself is also a some dynamic system. So to get some comprehensive understanding of some dynamics of information, we need to consider the demo itself as a some dynamic system. And, and actually, there is a long history of discussions by these big names so about the some dynamics of demo itself. So tomorrow, I will start with some brief review of this history, and then I will talk about some modern formulation based on stochastic some dynamics. OK, thank you. <laughs> is uh, also ready uh, in the cafeteria in the fourth floor and uh, I see you tomorrow again okay thank you